In this video, we're going to talk more about ratio tables. We've already used ratio tables to help find equivalent ratios or to compare equivalent ratios. But now we're going to use them to help find different quantities, different quantities that are proportional. So you definitely need your notes. Got a lot of notes and examples to fill out. Make sure you pause the video when necessary so that you can stay caught up in your notes. Here we go. Equivalent ratios express the same relationship between quantities. So for example, over here in our ratio table, we're comparing flour to water. And a ratio of two to three is equivalent to four to six. A ratio of two to three is equivalent to six to nine. The six to nine ratio is also equivalent to four to three. If you take these equivalent ratios, or these ratios, and you simplify them, you always go back to the simplified ratio of two to three. So you can look at this as doubling the ratio, two to three, if we double it or list the multiples, we get four to six. You can think of it as using a scale factor. If I multiply two times three, I get six, and if I do the same thing to this three, three times three will give me nine. So we have learned that ratio tables can help us organize to find equivalent ratios. Okay, to make a cleaning solution, you mix one cup of bleach with 16 cups of water. How much bleach should you mix with 48 cups of water to get the same strength of cleaning solution? So we want to keep the ratios the same. Okay, we have a ratio of one cup of bleach to 16 cups of water. Keeping it same, if we have 48 cups of water, how much bleach do we need? So this is our ratio table, and we're wanting to find this unknown amount right here. So just do what we do with the ratio tables. You could list your multiples, okay, one, next would be two, and if I double 16, I get 32. And then if I triple it and go to three, triple the 16, you would get the 48. So how many cups of bleach do you need? If you have 48 cups of water, you would need three cups of bleach. That's one way. Another way is just to use a scale factor. I can go from 16 to 48 by multiplying by a scale factor of three. So I'm gonna use the same scale factor and multiply one times three, and I get three. Both methods work when using a ratio table to find the unknown amount. So our answer would be just a simple statement because the question is how much bleach should you mix with 48 cups of water? The answer would be three cups bleach. Joey Chestnut won a hot dog eating contest by eating 66 hot dogs in 12 minutes. Oh my. If he ate at a constant rate, that means keeping it proportional, then how many hot dogs did he eat every two minutes? So here's our ratio table. We have our labels. We're comparing hot dogs to time in minutes. We're given the beginning ratio of 66 hot dogs in 12 minutes. So there's the 66 to 12. And what we're doing is we're changing the minutes to a two. So we need to find out how many hot dogs. A Couple of different ways you could do this. You could see that I can simplify both by six, so divide both by six, and you get 11. I'm sorry. I'll come back to that one. I could simplify by two, divide by two, and I would get 33 hot dogs, and when I divide the minutes, by two, I get six minutes. Then I could divide again. Six divided by what number would make two? Six divided by three, which means I then need to divide this 33 by three as well, and we get our 11 hot dogs per two minutes. You can eat 11 hot dogs in two minutes. And what I was starting to do at the beginning was you could bypass this middle step right here, and you could just go from straight from 66 
straight from 12 to 2 by recognizing that we need to divide by 6. Do the same thing up here. 66 divided by 6 is 11. 12 divided by 6 is 2. Either way, you get the same answer, 11 hot dogs. So what exactly are we doing here? Multiplying or dividing related quantities by the same number is called scaling. We always scale by multiplying or dividing. Never highlight that, circle that, underline it. Never by adding or subtracting. We always multiply or divide. That keeps everything equivalent or proportional. couple more examples. Skim milk contains about 80 calories for every 8 ounces. How many calories do 10 ounces of skim milk contain? So what are we comparing? We're compa comparing 80 calories for every 8 ounces. So set up our table. We're comparing milk to calories. Or you could have it the other way, calories to milk. Since our table is already set up this way, we have 8 ounces of milk is 8, 80 calories. We want to know how many calories does 10 ounces of milk have. Can we make it easy and just go straight from 8 to 10? No, there's no scale factor we can multiply by, and it is multiplication because we're getting larger. But we can't multiply 8 by anything to make a 10. So sometimes you're going to have to scale back, meaning you're going to have to make a smaller ratio. Then you can scale forward and make it larger. So if I scale back 8, I could divide by 4, I could divide by 2, but you want to think to yourself, you want to find a common factor between the starting point and our ending anchor points. So from the 8 to the 10, what is the common factor that they each have? If I divide by 2, that's going to give me a 4, but is 4 a common factor for 10? No. But they each have a common factor of 2, don't they? So I could divide 8 by 4 to make the 2. Can I also divide 80 by 4? You sure can. 80 divided by 4 is 20. Now that I have the common factor of 2, I can take this 2 and I can multiply it by a scale factor to make 10. And that scale factor would be 5. 2 times 5 is 10. Then I have to do the same thing to the 20. 20 times 5 will give us 100. So how many calories do 10 ounces of skim milk contain? They contain 100 calories. We're keeping everything proportional. Nothing is changing. Let's come down here. In scaling, the number we multiply by is called the scale factor. The scale factors here would be, what did we do first? We divided by 4, and then we multiplied by 5. Joe mows lawns during his summer vacation to earn money. He took 14 hours last week to mow eight lawns. At this rate, how many lawns could he mow in 49 hours? All right, so we're starting off with the ratio of hours to lawns. Okay, so here's our ratio table. Hours to lawns, we have 14 hours for eight lawns. What is it we're wanting to change? We're wanting to change the hours to 49. So that's going to come up here in the next table, next row, next column. And we want to find how many lawns. This is what we're looking for. Okay, there is no number we can multiply 14 by to make a 49. So this is where we're going to have to scale back first and then go forward. So we need to think about 14 and 49. What are some common factors? The only factors to make 14 are going to be 1 times 7. I'm sorry, 1 times 14 and 2 times 7. We know 14 is not a factor of 49. 1 doesn't change anything. 2 is not a factor of 49 because 49 is an odd number, but 7 is a factor of both. So I need to turn this 14 into a 7. I want to make it a 7. And to do that, I'm going to have to divide by 2. We're going to have to do the same thing to our lawns. We're going to have to divide our 8 by 2, and that gives us the 4. Now that we have a factor of 7 for the number of hours, 
we can then multiply it to get 49. We can multiply it by 7 to get 49. And we have to use the same scale factor on the bottom. 4 times 7 gives us 28. So how many lawns could he mow in 49 hours? 28 lawns.